checking the monopolar high frequency leakage current of the Medtronic Covidian Valley Lab FT10 using a Fluke Biomedical QAES3. Step one is we're going to connect the green ground wire to the variable low of the QAES3. We're then going to attach our black alligator clamp, like such, and go to the ground lug on the back of the FT10. Next, we're going to connect our red cable from the leftmost tie of the monopolar output one. We're going to use our adapter plug, like so. This will be found with the FT10. Then, we're going to connect the other end to the red port of the QAS3, the variable high. Next, it asks that you set a 200 ohm load. In order to do that, instead we're going to go to the high frequency leakage button, F3, of the QAS3. That automatically installs a 200 ohm load. Now we're going to manually activate monopolar spray on monopolar 1. So we're going to go to RF mode, spray, monopolar 1, and we're going to go to the max setting. We're going to go to 120 watts, which is the max setting. Start continuous on the QAS3 and activate on the FT10. Our reading is 49 milliamps. The max allowable reading is 150 milliamps as per the service manual. Deactivate on the FT10 and stop on the QAS3. Next, we're going to do monopolar 2. Disconnect the plug from monopolar 1. Disconnect the adapter and plug in to the monopolar 2 leftmost port. We're now going to select monopolar 2, spray 120 watts, start continuous on the QA ES3, and activate on the FT10. Our reading is 49 milliamps, the threshold is 150, so this passes. Deactivate and stop on the FT on the QAS3. Checking the patient return high frequency leakage current. We're going to remove the setup from the monopolar but leave the green wire in place from the variable low to the ground lug on the back of the unit. And then we're going to take our shorted run cable as turned by the FT10 manual or the QAS3 it's the ESU dispersive safety lead, to short it together, connect it into the REM port, and into the variable high of the QAES3. Still in the high frequency leakage mode, we are now going to go to pure cut. Three hundred watts. Activate the QAS3 by pressing F4 and activate the FT10. Our reading is 57 milliamps. The maximum tall reading is 100 milliamps. Deactivate, no hold. Stop the QAS3. Next, we're going to test blend. Max setting, 200 watts. Start continuous on the QAS3, activate the FT10. Our reading is 54 milliamps, again below the 100 milliamp threshold. Deactivate no hold and stop. Next, full grade. Max setting of 120 watts. Start continuous, 
activate in the FT10. 59 milliamps. Deactivate no hold. Stop in the QES3. Next, soft. At 120 watts, start continuous in the QAS3, activate FT10, 15 milliamps, deactivate no hold, stop on the QAS3, Valley Lab at 200. Valley Lab, two hundred. Start continuous. Activate. Sixty-one milliamps. Deactivate. Now hold. Stop. Next, shear spray dual. We're going to go to spray. One hundred and twenty watts. Start continuous, activate, 63 milliamps, deactivate no hold, and stop. That completes the checking of the patient return high frequency leakage current. Checking the bipolar high frequency leakage current. We're going to remove the monopolar setup from the prior step but leave the green ground wire intact from the very below of the QAS3 to the back of the FT10. Next, we're going to take our red cable, connect it to the variable high, and into the bipolar output of the, Q of the FT10. We're going to go into the leftmost port. Next, we're going to go to bipolar, high, max setting of 95 watts, start continuous, and activate. Our reading is 25 milliamps. Deactivate no hold, and stop. The maximum acceptable leakage is 69 milliamps for that test. Checking the Legasure Bipolar High Frequency Leakage Current on the Valley Lab Covidian FT10 using a QAS3. We're going to remove the setup from the prior step, but we're going to leave the green ground wire in place connected to the variable low with the other end to the ground lug on the back of the FT10. We're going to remain in HF leakage mode, which automatically puts a 200 ohm load as called by the manual. Next, we're going to connect the bipolar output to the QAS3. This requires a special cable. The standard output cable has this additional bump on it for piggybacking cables. The one you need is smooth on the outside without the bump. Connect one end into the variable high and then in step one connect to the right output line of the ligature which is the rightmost hole slot in the Ligature Bipolar port. Next, we're going to select Ligature. Three hundred and fifty watts. Start continuous and activate. Our current is 20 milliamps. Deactivate no hold and stop. Now we're going to connect the right output tine again. So we're still here in the right tine, but this time we're going to go to bipolar resection. Bipolar resection cut and effect six. Start continuous 
and activate. Our reading is 55 milliamps. Deactivate no hold and stop. 55 milliamps is well below the 100 milliamp threshold. Next, the left output time and again, bipolar resection cut. Bipolar resection cut and effect six, start continuous and activate at the FT10. Our reading is 45 milliamps, well below the 100 milliamp threshold. Deactivate no hold and stop. Next, connect to the left output tie for bipolar resection coag. Still in the left port. Select your mode, bipolar resection coag, effect six. Start continuous and activate the FT10. Our reading is 20 milliamps. Deactivate no hold and stop. Last, connect to the right output tie of bipolar resection coag. Remove the cable and connect to the rightmost port. Bipolar resection coag, effect six. Start continuous under HF leakage and activate. Our reading is 23 milliamps. Deactivate, no hold, and stop. That completes the check-in of the ligature slash bipolar high-frequency leakage current.